Hey, y'all. I am pinning your comment. Hey, mamas. One second. I'm so excited for this live today. If y'all have been following the page, then you know that Queen of Fua is actually going to be joining us today for our live. Let's see. So, let me turn this down. If you are not familiar with who Queen of Fu is, a lot of us um, in the healing work and um, black women, we know about Queen of Fu. She's amazing. Um, she has over 40 years of experience in holistic health healing. Um, she is a pioneer in the green food mo foods movement. And she's also the author of five best selling books, which uh, one of the most popular ones is Sacred Woman. Um, this is my copy. <laughs> my book is definitely kind of like been through the woodwork right now, but I still have it. Um, and so I have been conversing with Queen of Fua over the last few weeks, and I wanted to bring this conversation um, to Black Mom's blog because I know a lot of times as women, especially as mothers, we kind of lose that sacredness in ourselves. We forget that we're important and we forget that um we're supposed to put ourselves first and in putting ourselves first we can heal everybody around us thank you and so i thought it was super important especially during this time of the quarantine um a lot of us are just not in our natural element of being able to move around and be free and it has definitely been an adjustment for a lot of women, a lot of mothers, and trying to understand, like, what does this mean? Like, I've been locked in the house with my child for three months. Like, what do I do? And so I'm going to bring Queen on. Super excited to have her on. This discussion, y'all. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi, beautiful. It's so good to see your face. Thank you. So good to see you. Right, radiant face. <laughs> <laughs> so I knew I knew that you were gonna come into this live in all of our attire, and I thought it was only respectable to dress up in my own my own goddess attire. Yes, <laughs> I'm seeing you. I will dress on because I was ready for it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I just I just want to say first thank you. Thank you for having me. I just I just want to say first thank you on behalf of all of us um, for joining us here on Black Mom's Blog and having this conversation. I know that you know in your work how important it is to talk to mothers, reach out to women, to relearn their sacredness. You've made an entire life out of it. Um, and you've healed so many wonderful women and have been such a guide for me myself. So before we even start, I just want to share my gratitude and my thanks to you for the work that you do. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's my, my honor and pleasure. <laughs> and look, I showed everyone my sacred woman book, and this is what I have of it right now. <laughs> look, you know, they well, say you we... haven't been playing around with your healing. I'm trying to tell you. That's oh, it is real. So, That's Queen, I want to I wanna jump right into it. You know, for those that don't know your story and know about your healing work, <laughs> I know in, in learning about you that you started your work at 16 years old you talk mm -hmm. about how you suffered from a lot of different things like that and you had asthma and you decided that you wanted to take a weekend and go out on this this you know spiritual retreat to get your life together your mind it changed your whole life it led you on your journey so how does a 16 year old jump into that powerful so early on well, my father, <clears throat> my father was a guardian, and um, that would be considered a freedom fighter. Mm -hmm. And he was an entrepreneur, he worked for himself. So he had time to talk and train me and teach me in the kitchen. And he taught me about loving my people mm -hmm. and loving myself. And my mother demonstrated that love to how she cared for me. So the cultivation of having both parents in the house was very important. Even if we call ourselves single mothers, I don't think we're single. 
We yeah. have grandmothers, grandfathers. We have aunts and uncles. We have good friends. We have extended family. So when we think of ourselves as single, look at ourselves as isolated, alone, uncared for, untaken care of. We should have to switch that thinking. So for me, I did have my physical mother and father. And that gave me a lot of backbone, strength, uh, confidence in myself, even though I was very sick. And I remember being sick from age seven. I had allergies and I had eczema from head to toe. And just every so many years from eating so toxic, which I didn't know at the time, mm -hmm. that I finally got to the asthma. It kicked in about at age 15. And the asthma, like, it stopped my world. When an attack would come, it would be like an attack. And I would be sitting up in a chair all night, waiting for the sun to rise. Because when the sun would rise, I tried to get very close to the sun and how the sun moves through the day. Yes. It was real time for me. Because yes. when it was dark, I would suffer more because of the lifestyle during the daytime of toxicity. And then the night when the attack would come, it would be all night. And so when I wake up from the chair, because if I lay down the lung to collapse, I really was seeking in my soul for healing. When you make it up in your mind that you want this, it gotta be another way. This cannot be it. Right. So I knew that it couldn't be it. And I was invited by my friend Dr. Curie. Matter of fact, you look like her right now. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's my best friend. <laughs> and she had to wear orange. And she had your glow. And you have your hair adornment. So the spirit does travel. Yes, all of that. And she told me about this retreat that I should, I would, I, she said, I think you'll be interested. She was already, at that time, wasn't called vegan. Vegan kind of came in about 10 years ago. Yeah. She was vegetarian back then, lacto over vegetarian, or vegetarian. And so she was a vegetarian. She's the only vegetarian that I knew. And when she invited me to go to this retreat, she didn't go with me. And my instincts kicked in and said, there's something there at this retreat for me. I never went on the retreat. I never met the people there. But I wasn't, I wasn't afraid to go by myself. I just went. So I went upstate. I got the bus. OK, grass, trees, plants everywhere. That should be a place of paradise and joy for yeah. an asthmatic, someone with hay fever and allergies. It was death. And yeah. all of a sudden, I get the bus, I go into the cafeteria, I'm wheezing. I have no medication. I'm scratching. I have no help, no cream, nothing. But the creator spoke to me for the first time. I really heard it. I knew it. My first form, I had grapefruits, lemons, and oranges. And I took raw six tea, which is vitamin C2. It was just there, waiting for me. The healing was waiting for me. Right. And I know that the healing is waiting for all of us when we really make up in our souls and our minds to go ahead and do the work. So it started at that age. I woke up that, that whole night. I, I was in front of a fireplace. So maybe when I really started doing sweat lodges and taking oh, the, sweat the baths, the heat, the heat is medicine. <laughs> you know, even yes. now, if you take a hot bath and you take some ginger and cayenne and all, the heat will help to destroy this virus. So yes. I was heated up. The mucus was breaking up. That morning, I went through a detox. I didn't know it was a detox. But for an hour, it just kept pouring out of me. That was the asthma. That asthma never came back after that detox. The asthma, yeah. the allergies, and the hate, were all left within 21, 42 days. And so I picked up a book, um, Deep Gregory Cook with Mother Nature, Our mm -hmm. Ancestor, Make Rest in Peace. And that book really made me feel connected to family. I said, there's a family that's healing like this? I met all the people at that retreat that everything was like new to me. Vegetarian lifestyle, yoga, meditation, yes. herbology, massage therapy, all of this was a whole new world. But I was open because I it tapped into a miracle. Yes. I was able to not have that asthma for the rest of the the, uh, the retreat. Yeah. And I went home became an instant vegetarian. No transition. Yeah. <laughs> you want a cold turkey <laughs> straight into it? That's tough. That's tough. It wasn't tough because if you like to live, if you want to live, you want yeah. to breathe, 
you will do it's called by any means necessary. Don't play with yourself. Listen. Oh, I'm gonna have a little bit of cake, a little bit of junk, a little bit of this. When I finally got my lungs back, the doctor told my my mother, your daughter should live in a, a glass house. She's allergic to everything. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe a year from then, I would have been walking around in the street with a respirator. And yeah. every so many hours, I'd have to put oxygen back into my lungs. So that's not a life. And I was an artist then. I was a dancer. I was a singer. I was, I was a drama queen. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you touched on so many important things and what you said. <clears throat> Here on Black Mom's blog, I talk to women a lot about self-care, right? Because <laughs> as a blog, Blog. most baby blogs are focused on the baby but I'm like why are you so focused on the child when you can't focus on the mother the mother's the one that's going to be the healer and you said something so pivotal in the beginning and philosophy that I always live by I say I'm not a single mother I'm a single woman with a child and I talk to women about their village because you're you're we're never raising our children on our own we have hopefully the help of their fathers we have the help of their teachers we have the help of our own community, our elders. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Our sisters building mm -hmm. that tribe is so important. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to really ask you about your, your earlier journey and getting started in your healing work because to be 16 years old and have that type of confidence, even to say, I'm going to get on this bus and I'm going to go by myself. I'm going to go by myself to heal myself. A lot of that is a reflection of the environment in which you were raised right and yes. so it's always with the mothers now in the conversation you had with erica badu earlier about how a lot of people are doing it different and how in doing it different, we're not embraced maybe by some of our elders what advice do you have for the mothers that are trying to make this transition that are raising these children to be self-aware so that they are in to take their own healing into their hands even at 15 16 years old what what do we what do we do Come into a circle, find yeah. a circle. You have a, you, know, you have a circle, and you have a beautiful, powerful circle, because you're answering the needs of those sisters who are seeking hope. Yes. So find yourself a circle of women. That in that circle you're going to find some mothers. Even young girls can be like mothers to each other. Young women, <laughs> you know, <laughs> grandmothers to each other. The old souls that are here even in your circle. And so some are younger who need to be lifted up. Some have no wisdom and they need each other. So if we all come together, I always say, when you form a circle, what you need is in a circle. That's why you came to that circle. If you just start talking, what I need, and it's an exchange because no matter how you feel like destitute and you don't have it and you're going crazy, yeah. well, you still have something to offer to the circle. Yeah. And when you come in, someone says, oh my gosh, I love you. How you're thinking. I love your tenacity. I love your determination. I love that you fell and you didn't get back up again. You know, so everyone has something to give to the circle they come into. And it's, it's important to know that, so that's your confidence. And also, everyone has something to receive from the circle. And that completes the circle. It's a give, it's a take. So find that circle and move in the circle and stay dedicated and help to grow the circle. Listen, you have a you have a, a part to play. And and I always say that women, we all need a council of women around us because it's a reflection. And black women a lot of times are taught that we're competition. Or we see a sister's light and we say, I wanna shine like her. I wanna be like her, but not understanding that accepting your light, you're gonna speak to that inner part of another person. And they're gonna grow based off of you doing your thing, right? It's like they're literally going to grow based off of that community. And so when it comes to like femininity, womanhood and motherhood, mm -hmm. we're stronger together and we're forming these groups. And, you know, we see it right here sitting on the internet, but there's so much more powerful work offline mm -hmm. and those physical confined spaces, those retreats, those sister circles. And yeah. I live in Atlanta. I don't know. I know you've been down here. Oh, strong. Yeah. <laughs> Atlanta is strong for it. It's a beautiful thing. So in, in asking that, um, and I think you've kind of answered it, but I want to, I want you to, you know, really go in and talk about what inspired you to write Sacred Woman? What was it in your spirit that said, I need to write this book to help lead women back into themselves? I was teaching Sacred Women for about 30 some years. Mm 
-hmm. Before I was writing, it was about 20 years in. But I was, it was oral, teaching them. I created a little 14-page um, curriculum. Mm -hmm. And I had my notes and my bullet points. And I would teach in circles that way. It was a gentleman who actually told me, he asked me, he said, he was a, I published the book, Say, uh, Heal Thyself First. Mm -hmm. The Little Green Book for Health and Longevity. Yeah. <laughs> right? And it was a small publishing house because I published it myself first. And then I, I was their first book that they published, a and Books. Well, they came to visit one day and they saw my little 14-page book, Sacred Woman. And it was also, also coined the Goddess Program at that time. Mm -hmm. He said, can you make that into a book? I said, oh, no, it's not necessary because I teach it. There's no need for me to write it. I, I teach it. He asked me again, could you make it into a book? And I said, well, I wrote. I wrote as much as I can. I wrote the book Heal Thyself. That took so much work and so much focus and so much yeah. concentration. And I had to put some other things aside to even do that. So, no, I'm not going to write a book, but I'm going to continue to teach. So I was adamant, and he was adamant. So he said, you know what? If I were to send you away, maybe for a week, and is, is it possible that, you know, and I would pay for every, he pleaded with me. <laughs> yes, he knew how important it was. But you know what happened? He was a, he was a carnivorous, he was a meat eater, carnivorous eater. When I wrote the book, Heal Thyself, he became a fruitarian. He went all the way. A live fruitarian with a little bit of vegetables to support so he was on a very high frequency when he would ask me to do it. So finally I said, well, you know, it should, I can do it, I believe. I, that, it'll probably take me a year. Mm -hmm. So I went, I went to a source set in, in Brooklyn and I got myself nine blue candles. And those candles for me represented us, the mother. And I put it through nine for completion. I laid all the candles out. I went to my purple file cabinet and I took all my notes that I was teaching from. And I said, okay, this can take no more than a year, editing and everything else done. And then that company can go ahead and pick, carry the book and publish it and that'd be fine. It took me seven years. It's and, 11 pages long. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't stop. And with the seven years, when people would talk to me, all I could see was sacred woman. It's, and my, it, it got to the point, my daughter said, Mario, would you talk to me and stop writing? I said, I have nothing in my hand. I'm not writing. I'm talking to you. She says, no, I see it. You are writing. And I was caught up in the rapture. It was seven years of a complete union with the Most High, with the divine God, my great child, Jehovah God. And I was getting downloads, uploads. I was remembering the questions that the sisters had. I was remembering the tears that the women shed. And it took me to the most ancient woman, it took me to the woman of, that started Holistic Health from the Nile Valley, the African mother. And from her, I studied. And from that study, I learned that everything holistic is all African natural lifestyle. Yes. Reiki, the, the mother, Asa, never had sacred sisters. They worked with energy. They were energy healers. African natural lifestyle, herbology. African natural lifestyle, aromatherapy, we anointed our body with oils as a part of our purification ritual, African natural lifestyle. To this day, they're still doing it um, yes. in, in heaven. And then hydrotherapy, the healing baths, which I swear by, live by, uh, it would you go to a healing sanitarium in Kemet and for three days and you would be restored. You would do fasting, African natural lifestyle, color therapy, reflex, <clears throat> reflexology. All the forms that we call holistic, there's a trillion dollar business, is all African natural lifestyle. There's, yes. there, there's absolutely no reason to be sick or broken. That's what I found. If you take the lifestyle principles and don't do it to get well, do it to live. And do it to live for the rest of your life. I started at 16, I'm still on the path. Listen. I saw the same <laughs> principles because they have sustained me. They keep me creative, they keep me connected, they keep me charged up. So, you know, so for me, the you know, sacred woman is my own medicine. And my own medicine, I continue to live in and grow. And the book is growing because now we're, yes. we're three years deep. And we're now <laughs> in the fall of the anniversary book. 
<laughs> Sacred Women anniversary of 20 years. So I have some updates for the sisters that a very powerful update that I found over the 20 years. And that was and is that women are healers. Listen. We are the healers. <laughs> we are the healers. We're the healers, we're bottom the healers. line. And because we're not doing our work, we're having our breasts removed. Yeah. We're having our ovaries removed. We're having hysterectomy, all unnecessary if we take on that we're the healers and we're our healing tools in the garden, in nature. And that's all what Sacred Women's Book is all about. Claiming your tools, accepting your healer. And this affirmation I put in the book is going to come out. And I found that in reading the first written text of ancient spirituality, African spirituality. And it says, we are the women who lighten the darkness. We have come to lighten the darkness. It is lightened. We have overcome the destroyers. Yes. We are there for those who weep, who hide their faces from self down. They look upon us that we are the women. We are the healers. We are the healers. Yeah. We are the and healers. It's so that powerful. is the most liberating thing to know that you're no longer disempowered. Right. You just, you just have to find the circle. You got to <laughs> find the circle. knowledge and yeah. begin to build that inner healer up. Now, Queen, when it comes to your work, <laughs> mm -hmm. When you became pregnant, you have two children, correct? Three. Mm -hmm. Three. Three children. How did pregnancy affect <clears throat> your healing work for yourself and outwards towards other people? Pregnancy to me was devastating. Yeah. Um, every part of it was devastating. Uh, for me, a toxic relationship. Mm -hmm. So that right there began hell on earth. So I've learned to make healthy choices in life. I've, been, I've learned to heal myself deeper and deeper because relationships are your reflection. So I learned that. A part of you that you're not aware of that shows up. Mm -hmm. So I became pregnant and I was toxic because I was, even though I had been living a vegetarian lifestyle for seven years, I started to add up the amount of poison I accumulated from conception. We think our issue started here, right now, a year ago. No, it's when your mother's thoughts, your father's thoughts, what they ate, what they didn't do for themselves. You come into what we call a package, you're the package of the of composite of your mother, father's consciousness, which is yours. It is yours. So now you keep that going with years of, um, I, was, I conceived my first child, 23 or 22. And I had toxemia. And that means that the kidneys are overloaded, you swell, um, you, you're going to have to have a cesarean section, the pressure goes up. And I was a vegetarian, mm -hmm. but I had to detox my life. Right. That's what it was. It wasn't just the diet, it was my thoughts, my feelings, the words, what was spoken to me, my low self esteem. Um, being an African woman in America and, and not agreeing with this status quo, the system. Yes. And so that was deep. And I took that, and then I, I did have the first cesarean section. The second one, I, the doctor said, I said, I'm going to have a natural birth. I said, I studied. And I want to have, for my daughter, I'm gonna, you know, I'm telling my daughter, I said, I'm going to have a natural birth. Mm -hmm. And because um, I want to see my baby come out. I want to connect. I, I saw what it was not to have that connection and how the child, I, the child was over there and I'm here and we didn't bond. And that caused me to have a lot of emotional um, trauma. Yeah. So the babe, the second one, I, I was awake, but I wanted to go the natural way, but my doctor didn't show up. It was just trauma. And then another doctor ended up examining me and I jumped when he was examining because he was rough. And he said, well, it wasn't like that for you when, you when you made the baby. I said, okay, I'm never coming back to this world again. That was the end of it. I never, and I never went back. After yeah. the third child, that was it. I said, I'm going to study everything I can so no other woman would have to be insulted or That's beaten in the spirit or have to have a child in the hospital if they, if they couldn't have their own. Yes. So I was on a, a, a very a heavy quest. I just took my 
uh, the lemons and made me some lemonade and said, okay, since I have built all of that, I'm going to help others to not go through my trauma. Yeah. You know, this traumatic breastfeeding, I had no one there, but I could become a part of the Leche League breastfeeding mothers. Yeah. I was the only black woman there. I was always the only one, you know, of my clan, of my group. But I kept going because I knew that I had to learn to heal because yeah. I could not be subjected to what women are going through, and I had to be a vessel to help other women. So I became a healer early on. And, and, and my pregnancy, um, lack of knowledge of taking care of myself, and I had no mentor to help me. And the doctor said, sign your name just in case you die. I'm not taking responsibility in childbirth. I said, give me the paper. Give me the paper. I'm going to try to have the baby natural. So it was, it was a battle. And the battle never even ended because I didn't inoculate my children. The battle didn't end there. I had to smuggle them through. The battle didn't end there. I wanted to raise vegetarian children. My family wanted to give them meat. I, was, I took a black skill and said, go ahead, try it. <laughs> it was a total outright war. I didn't see them in the public school. I said, it's alternative school. I didn't want them to lose their soul. So it was like, I only calmed down when I became about 45 years old. I calmed down. I survived. <laughs> <laughs> I became a happy healer, <laughs> but the journey was rough. So that I'm, I'm love, I love what you do. I love how you support the sisters, and anything I can do, I want to be there to help. And that's why I wrote the books, and I did all the work. So we wouldn't suffer. That's what I, I appreciate you. But, you know, so many, so many black women now are birthing <clears throat> and don't even realize. You know, we, we don't even realize that going through the traumatic hospital births, our wombs are being taken advantage of. They're being taken from us. The placentas are being taken from us. And women, right now, they're not being birthed. They're not birthing in their village. So I, I'm currently writing a book about Black pregnancy. And so I did a lot of research on West African culture and how they birth their children and how uh, the women, they surround the birthing mother. And they, they speak to her in affirmation of love and that baby is not just that the birthing mother's house, the baby belongs to the whole community. Mm -hmm. And so even as we start to get back to our natural roots and speaking to mothers, every time I talk to mothers, they're going through it, talking about the trauma of their life. It mm -hmm. all leads back to their lack of community. Mm -hmm. And that community has to start all the way in birth. You know, you go into this stark white room with these walls and these doctors that are looking like a check and they don't care. They don't care, you know, what's happening with your body. You're not in comfort. And birth should be beautiful. You know, mm -hmm. children should not be born screaming and crying and pain and hurt. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's why even back to what you said at the beginning about I'm not a single mother. I'm not a single mother. I have tribe. I have community. I have people around me. There is so much power in our words. They're like little spells, right? That manifestation, anything that you want, you can say it, you can say it to it and it will happen mm -hmm. and so for our mothers that are watching this because a lot of black women you know 67 percent of black children are raised in single parent households mm -hmm. can you talk a little bit about what you mean when you say detoxify your life and your mind your words mm -hmm. what, you what are you feeding into your life so that you are able to step into this world in full confidence of mm -hmm. self well what we're missing, and that's why the circles provide uh, what we need, mm -hmm. the rites of passage. One years of chattel slavery, the Jews talk about their fellow courts. And um, they, they can speak on it, and everything is around that. Yes. Well, we don't. We say, OK, well, that's over. It's done. But that's why we have broken families. It comes from that. So we have to get our rites of passage. And that's what Sacred Women's Book is offering, a rites of passage, where women teach women. You have the young women being taught by the elder women how to be. Mm -hmm. And if we can stay in the circle, and we stay supporting the women all the way through their lives, as opposed to, now you went through your rites of passage. That's where the village comes in. Yes. Once you learn the ways of a woman, from everything, from womb medicine. So well, there's 40 womb issues out there. You might suffer from fibroid tumor or heavy bleeding and clotting. That's because you don't know how to heal. 
you didn't get the medicine from the women. You might uh, not be might be infertile, but you're really not. You just have to get energy to your womb. And so you learn the medicine in that gateway of newt. And then you go into words as medicine. What you speak is what you create. So your words have to become medicine to transform. Even if words have been harming you all your life, you have to come into circle with us trying to speak you up, speak you through. Okay. We, uh, we, we get stuck in one thought, one way, one job, a toxic union, and it makes us sick. So we use the yoga, the breath work, to help to unlock the trauma and the drama that we've gone through from relationship, unconscious relationship to unconscious relationship. And we go through all, it's, it's 12 of the gates. And the men, we have finally, after years of working and laboring, we've launched Man Heal Thyself, which will be sacred man to sacred And I know the brothers came to you and they were like, can you, can you please write a book for us? They have Because you had Heal Thyself and you're like, this is it. And they're like, no, we need something and for yeah, our own and healing. Right, they, they, they pushed me into a corner. They got an attitude. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, I can't really write a book for men. I can, I'm a woman, I write for men. They said, well, you have raised sons and you have raised community. So I, I, I finally received it. And, and it took about two years to yeah. bring it out. And now it's going to go, it's going to another, another metamorphosis. So my son, Supernova Islam, hip hop medicine man with his spiritual cousin, hallelujah. They <laughs> have, right, they've come together and they're, they're, they're doing extraordinary work. Yeah. 22 men. Uh, from all ages are going through their rites of passage while Satan are going through their rites of passage. And we graduate everyone in Atlanta. Please come as our guest. We'll be, we'll be there in July, 100 women and men all together in the, at the Black House and, you know, at the Renaissance Hotel. And so that union of walking together, healing as you're going, yeah. that's a new civilization. My son, uh, Cohen, he said, Mom, what you're, what you're bringing for this analyzing is a sacred nation. I said, hmm, I think <laughs> I must be. <laughs> sacred woman, sacred man, sacred children, sacred elders. Literally. You know, and so there is a roadmap that I have observed and studied and did much research, as you have done research on your book, Congratulations, that is further itself. Thank you. That is a formula. There is one song that stayed with me since 1969 that shapes my mind every single day from that point. That was the, that was the era freedom fighting came out, uh, African culture, African dance, natural hair, um, uh, everything that was whole was coming out of that time. Yoga, meditation. Vegetarian lifestyle, it really came out of the 60s. Malcolm, Martin, it all came out of the 60s. So the song is the creator has a master plan. Peace and happiness throughout the land. The creator has but one demand, peace and happiness for every man and woman. Yes. And I said, well, where is this plan? I want to know what the plan, I was 16. It was all happy for me, I was 16. Mm -hmm. I said, what is the plan? Where is the plan? And later on in life, going through my own personal healing and transformation and, and speaking to every single person who would look at me, I would tell them about the healing, that they can get out of this, they can get off the track, they can be well. And I found that you have the plan. I have the plan. <laughs> we have the plan. All you have to do is say yes. Yes, Mom. All you have yes. to do is say yes and walk into it. And, I tell and women walk with it to the fullest. Yes. And that plan came through my book, Heal Thyself, was part of the roadmap. We had yeah. to make the gold map. Sacred woman, man heal thyself, serving the world, overcoming, planet heal. These are all the plans. And if we allow ourselves to birth our womb, out of our womb center, the womb of our mind, the womb of our heart, and our seed of creation, that we will bring something so great to this planet that it will transform everyone in your grasp. That I know. We all have a gift. And that is part of the plan to recognize and realize, and it all comes from the birthing experience. Birthing your purpose, birthing your vision is the same amount of work as conceiving a child, conceiving your vision, holding it, getting pregnant with it, carrying it, nursing it, seeing it, 
and then the grand time for you now to bring it forward as a herbalist, as an acupuncturist, as a midwife, as a doula, yes. as an author to bring, to bring down and bring through your purpose. And if you took really good care of yourself and you nurtured yourself from the garden foods and let go of the dead things, because you don't want to birth dead. You don't want to. That's simply birthing on earth. That's why there's so much pain and suffering. Everyone right. is, is just, it is all, I just looked at a, 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 a film last night, you know, social media, an, an actress, she was crying her soul out. And, um, and I got it, but this time, she said, I've been in my house for 12 days, and I just came out, she was totally traumatized. And that went viral. But can wellness go viral? Can wellness go viral? Can, can, we, we, can wellness go so many exactly. people, We already know what to do. Look at you glowing at this time. How can you be glowing? Because how you're living. How can you even yes. smile during this time? Because how you're living. There's enough of us. There's an uprise. Yes. There's an uprise of all of us as healed and say, wait a minute, how come that's not being televised? Listen. You got the senator, the congressman, <laughs> but you got the president, everybody fighting amongst themselves. Meanwhile, 15 bodies was in Brooklyn, in Flatbush, from the corona virus in a U-Haul truck, they threw the bodies away. People smelled the stint. They were in there for two weeks. Really? That's all that's all we that's all that's what we've come to. We can't even touch each other now. We're so toxic that we gotta cover our face from each other. Well see you know the deeper the, the deeper the heaviness, the higher you can rise. This is the time to when you're in your house, do not look at this to be on a quarantine. Don't even say that word anymore. Say you're on a retreat. You're on, you're, on a, you're on a healing retreat of self because the, the, the insane part about it is people have been asking for a break and how we talk about words being sacred and having power. You got your break. What are you going to do with it? Mm. What are you going to do with it? I always mm -hmm. say I only, in my entire life, I've only met a handful of happy people. Only a handful out of all the people that claim that they're happy and they're okay and they're living their life to the fullest and all these things we media there's only a handful of people that i've met that are truly living in their purpose and walking in their purpose and i tell people see them they just made a choice and and people well how i can't do this because well, it was a choice all of it is so and speaking with mothers about that choice and mm -hmm. a lot of us women sometimes we like to play victim instead of victor we like to say we're in this situation because somebody else put me here or this man left me it happened for women that are doing their healing work and they're trying to um, sustain their life in a place of happiness and wellness and, and raise their children properly, how important is it that they properly vet the men who have access to their wombs to give them children? What, what does it mean for a woman that has done all of this spiritual work, connect with a man that has done his own healing? How can he in a negative way and reverse her process? I'm not really, some of the, the voice dropped a little bit, so I'm going to just take what I think I heard. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, think, I think you gathered, I think you, I think you can put it together. <laughs> you laugh. No. Well, I think we all, you know how I look at, I don't ever use the word divorce again. You know what you're going to use from now on? Transformation. Uh, life partner in a different kind of way. Okay, so if you yeah. don't have, if you end a relationship, we're all going to end something and begin something new. So if you have ended a relationship, then if you say, I divorce, you're going to get another divorce. Because it's a frequency. Divorce is a frequency. It's a hurt. It's a woundedness. I, I just divorced. That means you cut yourself in half, cut the children in half, curse each other, go to court. There's a whole list of things that comes with yeah. being divorced. But if you say, you know what, I have, I've gone through transformation in this letting go, mm -hmm. then that means, oh, I'm going to learn some new things. I'm going to overcome some stuff. I'm going to grow. I'm going to open my heart to forgive. I'm going to heal myself deeper. I'm going to really recommit myself to my healing, to my wellness. Yes. Then what you're going to attract is a healthy relationship. Yes. Because yes. you're in the spirit yes. of transformation. Yes. But if you're in a relationship that is toxic right now, don't look at the relationship, look within. Yes. Go to yourself. Go within yourself. Take yourself, give yourself 21 days, give yourself 12 weeks of focused healing. Get on, get with your juices every day. Take your healing bath three or four times a week with your Dead Sea salt and your aromatherapy, light your candles. 
Come on for the flesh. Go. At 4 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, Kay. That's why you look just like me. <laughs> look. It's all morning. the oneness. Exhausted. Got, yeah. Oh, but I got to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Get into the lifestyle like your life depended on it. And watch the men around you, the people around you begin to yeah. transform because of your transformation. You said, this is a miracle. How do other people start changing? They didn't change. You didn't change. change. Because of you, every, it's a frequency. You drop the pebble in the water, it reverberates out. You drop into yourself your wellness. And that everything wellness moves out you. and transforms yeah. everyone and everything, and including the children. You worry about the children. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I said I saw my daughter last. I said I survived you all. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. <laughs> I'm a mother. Oh my god. Of motherhood. I am a survivor. <laughs> I but love to a survivor. Oh, when you drop our, our children. Mm -hmm. Also, I've learned our children are lessons. Yes. Our children lessons. are an extension of our consciousness. Whatever we were going through in the conception and the pregnancy. The children become that. We see it right before us. And so all through stages of my development or my lack of development through the state of my children, which gave me a lot of compassion for them. Mm -hmm. I have so much compassion for whatever their situation has been or is because I was at that stage when I brought them into my being and carried them. And my lack, that's why when you, when you can see, before you can see, prepare yourself. We're losing the mothers because of a lack of preparation. We're losing the babies, they're coming to the world sick because of lack of wellness. So before you can see, before you even attract, if you don't have a mate right now, then work on yourself. Like, oh my gosh, I have to, don't be depressed. Listen, we've been in the don't house for three months. You could have been through this 12 week program. <laughs> <laughs> even you home. so right. We have you been are so home. on it. We have Absolutely. been home. But start but, wherever you are. Some that some haven't started at all. They just ate but you so know, crazy. But this is this is the beautiful part about healing yourself is when you really heal yourself, you heal from a place of humbleness. One of my favorite quotes by Malcolm X, I don't know it word for word, but he basically says there was once a time when you didn't know what you know now. And so be you know, be careful of how you judge another person in their healing work. And so what you mm -hmm. said about when you heal yourself, you and this is Nelson Mandela, you allow other people to shine and heal themselves, right? Because you're dropping down and it's going to cause this ripple effect to come mm -hmm. out. And mm -hmm. I always tell my friends, I'm like, y'all are my own personal case studies because I know when I got into my work and I accepted the fact that it would not make sense, that it would not be accepted, that it would not be believed until I continue to do it yeah. in a way where it didn't matter. And everything in my life at this point has become so beautiful. Mm -hmm. and has been so wonderful and I've restored relationships that I've lost with past sisters. I've restored mm -hmm. it with my child's father. We mm -hmm. co-parent in the most beautiful way. We have the most wonderful bond and we're not together anymore. And so when women are talking about their anger, they're upset that this man doesn't want them anymore and he cheated on them and it's all this turmoil. I'm so hurt and I'm alone and he left me by myself. And in reality, a lot of times these women are 25 to 35. You've got a good 80 years left, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Let that man go. <laughs> you have so much life left in yourself. Mm -hmm. and, and it's like your children, there's so much beauty out there. We want to, you know, settle and bury into this victimization of self. And in reality, it's like, okay, this was three years of your life. It did not work out the way that you want it. It's okay. That man is still your child's father. Respect, honor him, and in respecting and honor him, you're gonna teach him how to respect and honor you. That's real healing. Mm -hmm. Going past understanding that you may not get the apology, you may not get the acceptance right away. But one thing about this work that I know that you know, Queen of Fools, is that if you're doing it the right way, you're always gonna be supposed to get at the end. You're gonna manifest it. You know, you're gonna speak it. You're going to manifest what you want and what you don't want. Yeah. So you have to be very clear in your thinking and the undercurrent. And that's where the detox comes in. That's where the fasting and the live foods and the juice that helps you go in deeper. Yeah. Because we're actually living out all the stuff that's buried. 
yes. what happened in 2001, who hurt you in 2005. 2000. You know, it's, it's literally, as Erica said, bad lady, just carrying these relationships and the pain and suffering into the new relationship. We think it's a new relationship, it's the same old one that yeah. you haven't overcome. So then really you stop blaming everyone outside. You stop, stop blaming everybody. You don't blame you either. You just learn. Be a student of life and say, yeah. what, what lesson did this relationship bring to me? What lesson is this relationship bring to me right now so that I can shift and I can have a happier life? And I can be at peace. And that's what I'm noticing with the sacred women. They're like so excited. The ones who have their mace, it's about four women who are taking the sacred practitioner work and their mace are going to do it. And their mace are getting so happy because the women were healing so intensely. Women heal. This is our time. We are changing, we are shifting, but we're leaving our men far behind. They don't have sacred circles. They don't have enough circles like we do. We can just get a circle in a second. Yes. And that makes the relationship go through a strain. It does. So the more that we can bring our men into the wellness, the stronger the relationship can be. And then as you heal, give them a bath, run them a bath. So I don't feel, well, I gotta run them a bath. See, now that's the problem right there. You know, if you don't want to give to him, you don't want to give to you. Give to him and yep. give to him lovingly. Then what happens, he will wake up and he will get yes. healthy and he will return the blessing. So we're healers. Take your position and lift your family up and your family will lift you up. And the mother is the matriarch. It's like you said, women are the healers. Yes. And, you know, it's not that we're raising kings or turning men into kings, but we, we kind of offer the power in femininity. That's the power in woman that you can create. You can literally take a paintbrush and create your reality by feeding into your husband, your partner, your spouse, like, you know, and, and for us as black women, a lot of us grew up with nagging mothers. We all know what a nagging mother is, you know, where everything she's saying is negative and she hates and she's upset. And for my women out there that are nagging women, watch your words. <laughs> watch what you say and, 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 and keep a tracker. I told my own mother this, keep a tracker. What's coming out of your mouth, positive or negative? Speaking on what you love or are you speaking on what you hate? And when you start to speak on what you love, you start to see love. You start to manifest love in your life. So for our, our mothers out there that have children, my daughter is seven years old. What are some ways of bringing our children into the healing work with us and teaching them ways to, to develop their own healing practices, even as young girls and our young sons? Mm -hmm. Well, what you do, they do. Yeah. You do it together. I speak to my daughter last night. She reminds you, said, Ma, I remember you used to do ices and make the ice cream in the kitchen and bring us in. And we did the same thing. And we made uh, cupcakes and we did the dish. She went through all of the stuff that she made her happy. Yes. So go in that kitchen with your children. They love to work with a the juicer. They want to put stuff in that juice and see it's like magic to them. Wow. I just make a big deal about whole food and stuff. Oh my gosh, we're about to have apple and pear juice. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like seven and ten. Wow, mine's looking at apple and pear juice. I got the ginger. They would give me the stuff, we put in the juice I'll put the music on here, dancing and juicing and making a party with celebration. About the word, right? Yeah. And they and that's how they that's how they why well, they're all into the food. <laughs> because I always made it like a big deal that we're eating whole and it's okay that other children are not eating this way, they don't know any better, they're gonna, they're gonna learn what you learned at their time because they felt strange being different when they go to school. Yeah. So, you know, so we have to do, we have to go back to the old 60s and start creating our own schools. We do. Our we own do. weekend uh, academies. Yeah. So that our children amongst other children also are healthy. Otherwise, they're going to have a double life and they're going to get the childhood diseases that you're trying to prevent them from having. And then run fast for your children. Let them practice soaking their pain away, their hurt, because you don't even know what they're going through when they talk to other children. Yes. Some children, sometimes the children batter each other. They say mean words because that's what they're hurt at home. And there's a lot of, they come home with all that, those issues. I asked two little children while doing this retreat, they call quarantine. <laughs> uh, one is 11 and the other one's 12. Mm -hmm. And I said, so how, uh, what do you feel about um, being home, home homeschooling? Everybody's doing our life. Homeschooling. I very much on homeschooling. 
entrepreneurship, people waking up, they have to heal themselves so they're not that in the hospital, <laughs> they don't have enough anything. So go home and heal yourself. So it's all coming back to, to us, really. Yeah. And so I asked them, they said, one says, I love being home. The children are crazy in school. He's 11. It's, it's, there's no the peace. Right? It's, 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 children are all, they're on drugs. The children are on crack, sugar, junk food. They're eating hamburgers and french fries and all that dead stuff. So they're attacking each other. They're fighting each other. And yeah. if you have a peaceful child going into that environment, they're going to be impacted by it. They're going to be stressing. Imagine you going to work, everybody got to be fighting and arguing. Listen, I have, okay. I have worked for myself for, for six years. I've worked by, by myself as an entrepreneur for six years. And when I have to step outside of my space and be in positions that are uncomfortable, it, it makes me think about that. It's this force going to work a nine to five. Mm -hmm. Your coworker is smoking cigarettes and your coworker over here is cursing everybody out. And you're, you're being shaken, you're being taken out of your comfort. And our children are placed in that situation. And children are ruthless. Oh my God, they're worse than adults, some of them. Like, they're hard, they're hard. And so you're right, like, they're, they're being put in a situation where their home could be so peaceable, but yet they're having to spend eight hours of their day in a setting that is so unlike the home piece that you've created. Absolutely. And, you know, I used to take walks with my children at night. And, I, and during those walks, I would say, let's talk. Let's just share, what are you doing? What do you feel? It's something about being in the sky mother <clears throat> and being the light and outdoors that it does a healing on your spirit. So yeah. just do simple things. It doesn't cost anything to just take a walk with them and to talk with them and to share and to do art. Yes. You know, do, do drama, do, you know, write. You do all those other crazy things because if they, what happens in families now, one picks up their phone, the other one has their phone. They have, they're in one house, they share the same house, there's no connection. Yeah. And then when they go to eat, they go take their food into separate rooms and yeah. separate corners. So they're isolated. So now, here, now we get it. Now I'm online to go get some, some broccoli or kale, and you got to be six feet away. Whoa. Humanity has come to this level. Isn't it? You can't be close. You can't be close. Be close. That's a problem. When this so problem we have to raise up. The healers have to raise up and come up all the way now. That's us. We're being called at a time such as this. Yes. Queen, what, what are some things that you have in place? for women that are watching this live, that are wondering, how do I get started? What's the next step for me? How do I begin my own healing journey? Um, and what do you have coming up in the future that, that works to facilitate womanhood and sister circles? Well, I am, in, a, in about two weeks from now, I'll be teaching a two-day virtual, it's my first virtual retreat. Mm -hmm. I look forward though. It's, it's a, um, Sacred Womb Awaken. Mm -hmm. So any, the book Overcoming was written for women, young women in there, from teen to 35, 40 years old. Can you say the full name of that book? Because I need people to hear it <clears throat> wow. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, it's, being, it's going through a translation because people couldn't understand it. The name of the book was, it's going through a translation. It was okay. called Overcoming an Angry Vagina. Love that title. Journey to Woo Wellness. Of course you love it. You're in the Others like, huh? And they would call me up and say, Queen, I need the um the um the um the, the angry vagina book. The like, angry oh, vagina book. I said, no, it's to overcome her. <laughs> overcome <laughs> that <laughs> that pain. That's something. So it has transformed itself. It's you know, always be ready to grow. Yes. To shift, to change. You say, Well, I've been doing this for 30 years, well, that's okay. It's your time to shift, and that's it. So it's now sacred womb awaken, <laughs> and that's and that's to teach women um, how to not have to suffer. And I talk about from five point two minutes. A big way for women to change is to check to check your menstrual flow. Yes, that is a, once you see that shift, you are you are to a great path now. If your menstrual flow is five days or more, you're in trouble. Yeah. Hemorrhaging, right? And you're losing your consciousness. 
and it's affecting your emotions. So you have to say, what am I living? How am I living that I have that heavy flow, which connects to the fibroids, yes. which connects to the endometriosis. It's a, it's a link between the prolapsed uterus that later becomes a hysterectomy. And so I teach how to avoid and prevent that using plant medicine, food as medicine, movement as medicine, air as breathing as medicine. I also teach womb yoga dance. So I'll just be touching a little bit of womb yoga dance with it as well and hydrotherapy and how to read your elements, air, fire, water, and earth, and how to bring them into balance. So you become a supernatural woman. Yes. I, I also to, you know, we do a lot of period work, uh, menstrual health. Um, this past February, we had the period party with the follow-up from our menstrual drive, and we collect tampons mm -hmm. and menstrual cups for a homeless shelter in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And this year, we collected over a 1,000 donations. And so mm -hmm. the period party, we had a panelist, Chef Aki, the panel, mm -hmm. uh, teachers from the Honey Pot. I had two doctors sit and educate women on their menstrual cycles. And I encourage women to free bleed because when you free bleed, at least a, you can't do it all the time, at least a few times out of the year, take a month and, and learn how your menstrual flows. And you'll be surprised at what you see because you, you know, most people think you're in your cycle, you're bleeding, so you're not bleeding the whole time. You, you, pass, you pass the menstrual blood and then you can walk around. You're not bleeding at all. And sometimes you just need to sit in a bath on the toilet and let it come out. Um, but you're right, like a period shouldn't last that long. And your heavy days, or only maybe a day or two outside of exactly. that, you're barely bleeding at all. Well, no PMS. It's when not women realize they don't have that pain, it's a mind blower. I was, my mind was blown away. Yeah. And it was like, I, I, whenever my menstrual flow would happen, I, I, had to make, I had to stretch out and moan and throw up and be nauseous and you mm -hmm. know, all of that. And then when I became a vegan, well, at the time I was vegetarian, mm -hmm. and I was living off of plants and juicing and all of that, then Three months later, I had no pain. I said, wait a minute, how did my period come without pain? Yeah. You know, and then you told you're cursed on top of it. So you're cursed both have pain. And that's not the truth. And but the, the more you detox, go, go through 12 weeks of consistent detoxification. You're yeah. juicing, your vegan lifestyle, your vegetable protein, your enemas, your bath, all of that. And every 28 days, your menstrual flow becomes one day less and one day less. Second, second or third month in, there's no more PMS, no more mood swings. You say, well, what was that? That was not the truth then. Yeah. Yeah. And so now it's, the whole industry has changed. When women become conscious, the economic stream shifts too. Yes. Oh. It's a lot of, <laughs> it's a lot of money made on our ignorance. <laughs> the, yes. The, the, if you don't know how to heal your womb, you're going to be a part of... Uh, you know I that. say when you're doing the work, the universe will take care of you in the most beautiful, divine way. Mm -hmm. Queen, we have a minute left. Do you have any closing words before mm -hmm. we hop off this slide? Well, first, thank you so much for giving me this moment to be with you. I'm so grateful. And I am teaching. I'm, I'm on a, a vigil. I'm teaching the Emerald Green practitioner training to women who want to be able to cover 103 diseases. And these are my, they call trade secrets of wellness. I'm, I'm going to give them to the sisters and to the brothers to learn. So you can create wellness homes and create healers in every home and spread this knowledge, you know, globally. So again, you can check www.queenfood.com and, and, and come into my university and I'll learn how to heal. <laughs> knowledge is power. Thank you, Queen. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Blessings. Y'all, that was amazing. Um, if you happen to miss any of the conversation, this live will be posted to our page now. I guess that's what Instagram does when you miss a live. It, it doesn't post to the stories anymore. It posts directly to the account. Um, thank y'all for watching. That's it. <laughs>